before the fun begins. Hello, welcome to the council. We begin tonight's meeting of the council by calling the council to order. Hello to everyone and thank you for joining us. The council's a live Twitch talk show and podcast discussing Star Wars The Old Republic. I'm Elise, and with me are my fellow council members, Magic Ace. Hello. Redna. And sadly, Sakari is not with us tonight. He uh, has some other engagements he needed to do today. So. And, uh, and oh. FYI, sorry, I had strep throat this last weekend. It's what my daughter gave me for Mother's Day. She's a real gem. So, <clears throat> you know, sorry for that. Go ahead. <laughs> We're going to talk about open world PvP just in time for Magic Ace to have strep throat. It's joy. Yeah, which is great because this was my idea for topic. So Listen, don't don't give it but, to my computer because I don't need one of those dirty computer viruses. Too bad. Anyways, <laughs> after our live broadcast, you can find our recorded episodes everywhere the episodes might be found, like our YouTube channel, and that would be at the Council Sotor that you can find it. You can also find us on our website, which is thecouncilsotor.com. We have Facebook, which is the Council Sotor, and Twitter, which is at thecouncilsotor.com. But wait, there's more. We also have a Patreon page, which is patreon.com slash thecouncilsotor. If you genuinely use us in any search engine, you can find us or just Google my pretty face, and you'll find us there too. Please and thank you. <laughs> okay. And um, so I guess I'm supposed to do the icebreaker. And since I haven't prepared one i'll just go ahead and ask you guys hey have you had an open world pvp experience and did you enjoy it elise um okay have i had an open world experience pvp experience no and did i enjoy that yes <laughs> there you go <laughs> how about you magic Heck yes, multiple, and I can't think of one that I didn't enjoy, especially like the guild events type things. Oh, and the the march towards the Scare Bear title. Oh my gosh, yes. So yes and yes. Now that I've unmuted my microphone, my open world experience would be one where, because <laughs> uh, it depends on how you define open world, but I tend to find that I enjoy the running around in the open world, and particularly I tend to level with other people. I don't tend to level solo, and so I'm usually running around with a friend, and we've each got our companions out, and then if we encounter somebody, it's a heck of a lot of fun to, you know, break them down, or even, you know, discover that they've got some friend stealth nearby that they turn it around on us or whatever. Like, I don't know. I've, I have always actually enjoyed that. Uh, we'll talk more about the very, very large scale opportunities that used to exist or quasi do exist today um, but even in other games I've not been particularly interested in those really huge hundreds of people engagements and mostly because I just like uh, I've personally enjoyed the organically driven open world pvp as opposed to you know forced objective you know like getting dailies done or whatever stuff like that like what they currently have on Ilum during the event um, but that's just me and um, yeah, I guess that's about it. You want to go over the straw poll stuff? Um, well, first, um, I could read, I think, uh, some of what, um, Sakari left us fits in here a little bit. Um, so for Sakari to the question, have you had an open world ex PVP experience? And he said, yes, but not the beginning because he was still leveling. So he didn't get to experience Alum back in the day, um, but he got into it later. And then he talked about um, doing open world PVP on the Bastion. Yeah, I guess his big favorite experience by far, he says, was on Tatooine in the Dune Sea between Outpost Thorazan for the pubs and Outpost Zarrosh 
for the imps where they would gather as many people as they could from the fleet and then commence big open battles. Uh, it wasn't so much a game of skill as it was being careful where you positioned yourself. Too far out and you'd get squashed, too close to the middle of the group and you'd get no action, and shadows and assassins and operatives and scoundrels would have a blast slipping behind enemy lines to CC healers. And then there was also some strategy about pushing the front, trying to flank etc that sort of stuff so he he seems to have really enjoyed that massive scale uh open world pvp environment yeah he and i both started out on the bastion and for people who are not aware or don't remember it that was a all pvp server you had your like townships and stuff that was a safe zone where you could do certain quests but when you would leave that area it became open world pvp and one of the best things was ganking someone during their quest. They'd be like on their way, marching, you know, see a little Jedi. And you're like, wow, my fully geared companion and myself. And you jump them and hopefully you wouldn't get smashed. So it, when you learn to level that way and you did all your questing and you were very strategic and like when you went and if you took someone with you or not and how geared your companion was, like... It made all the difference. It was a whole different questing experience. Now everything's just so easy and different. You have to swap instances for PvP. Like, I was on an all PvP server. That's all there was. So now, questing now for me is weird. Sometimes I'll go to the PvP instance just to experience that again. Because that's a totally different way to play, in my opinion. If you've never experienced that, you're missing part of Star Wars. Okay, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> you're missing part of it. I'm, I'm okay with that. Thank, thank you, though. Jeez, <laughs> <laughs> hey, I enjoy listening to the stories and the tactics. I, I find it entertaining, but I would be pissed as heck if someone, like, smacked me around and me, sent me back to, the like, the med center after I just, like, tracked all the way across to get to this, like, thing that's in the middle of whatever. I'd be mad really really mad so so yeah. the only part that was bad is when you would get the trolls who would just camp your dead body and wait for you to hit your med probe and like you'd hit your med probe and you'd have the eight seconds of protection and you'd go heal up and then boom they're on you again like that just made it impossible to quest so there's times like that where it's like okay it's just better to log off for a little bit go make a sandwich go to the bathroom and come back in 10 minutes when they're they're gone and finish your quest so yeah there was cons about it but there was <laughs> tactics with that, too. <laughs> okay. My friends and I always had more of the attitude that, uh, you know, we would take targets of opportunity, but we wouldn't harass them, you know, or stick around. And I would kill them once and leave. Like, yeah, exactly. Okay, I kicked your butt. Now I'm going to leave and let you use your med probe. And then if they were free to play and didn't have med probes or they were limited, I'm like, oh, man, sucks to be you. Laters. <laughs> and also, it was always actually quite wow. a bit of fun. Like, if, if a guildie was like, dude, guys, this guy's killed me four times. He won't leave me alone. I just want to turn in this one quest. And we would all just be like, you know, as a guild, just swarm the location. And then in those cases, it wouldn't be just kill once. It's like, okay, you set the precedent. We aren't going to stop killing you until you log out. And we will go to where if you release body back to medical, we're standing there killing the city guards ready for you to kill you on top of the medical droid. <laughs> that was also quite a bit of fun. Mm. Well, that was the best way to get the Scare Bear title on Oricon was to, on the bridge, the med center's there, because there's the pub med center and the imp med center. And so you you would fight there on the bridge, right where, like, DF and DP is, the entrances to it. And you could just respawn quickly and get back in the battle after you've died. And, you know, that's how you could keep a big event going like that. But we should probably save that for slightly more in there. How about that straw poll, Elise? <laughs> Okay, so we asked the community this week um, about open world PvP, specifically daily. So the question was, would you like to see Bioware bring back open world PvP dailies on select planets? A was yes, and B was no. Now, I'm going to assume, I don't know, like, Brenda, do you have, like, like the bot skills, or are we just going to... Oh, Lady Dini was in there. She could get things started. Technically, Ooh. I do. I don't know what the commands are. <laughs> what do we call this again? It's a poll? <laughs> hey! Oh, no. It's an invalid parameter by Nightbot, apparently. 
well, <laughs> since Redna's so prepared for this, <laughs> we'll just um, let you guys ah, vote. It's a question. Eight. Lady danie has got it going now. <laughs> oh, okay. thank you, Lady Danie. We have Lady Danie to the rescue. Everybody, clap for Lady Danie. That's right. Um, <clears throat> so, okay. Um, I assume Lady Danie is going to. Uh, I assume A and B. Or one and two. Yes, it's Don't straight off of said. our poll. Okay, cool. Um, so please vote. Let us know what how you would say. Um, <clears throat> now on Reddit this week, um, it's interesting because the question got viewed 1.2 thousand times. Um, we actually had 29 upvotes. It was really nice, and 36 comments. Um, a uh, common theme that is repeated, and I assume you all will talk about it later, um, was um, that the nose basically were citing the engine and lag when you got too many people together in one area. So that was probably the most common reason that people were saying, no, they don't want... Um, PV, open world PvP dailies to come back and whatnot. So that was the one thing that really struck out to me. Well, coming from someone, coming from someone who now has a computer that can handle that stuff, bah humbug. <laughs> That's how I feel. Back well, in the day, though, I'd be like, oh bummer. And I don't know if you actually read it out loud. Would you like to see Bioware bring back open world PvP dailies on select planets? Yes or no? Yeah, she did. Okay. I did. So, uh, and I guess if we open it up to ourselves, I'll read Sakari's response, which is that uh, how would he vote in the poll? I wish I could vote to bring it back, but I fear the reason servers like the Bastion and Prophecy of the Five were dying was because people who didn't enjoy having their lobies ganked for were transferring to the Bastion. Wait, were transferring to. No, I completely lost my place. We're transferring to the Bastion and the Shadowlands. I think he meant... From the, to the Bastion PvE. to the Shadowlands. Because that's what, that's what a lot of us did. That's what he and I both did. We went from the Bastion to the Shadowlands. We didn't even know each other, but that's what we ended up doing. Is Because in the Shadowlands, it was a PvP, PvE server, so you had the best of both. Oh, okay. A lot of people were transferring their tunes over. I did that. I brought all my favorite pub and imp tunes over, which, by the way, freaking expensive at the time. But yes, um, that was very common. In fact, by, before the server merged, the Bastion felt like it was almost completely dead, which was sad because that was my favorite for the longest time. Well, I mean, uh, uh, well, we can get into... I, I guess now's a good enough time to say it. He said that he uh, his wish wouldn't be for Bioware to necessarily return it, but his wish would be for the com community. He wishes that the community had enjoyed it more and realized that there was no downside to being ganked. But um, in my opinion, actually, I don't think it was actually the uh, reduction in servers so much. It was as soon as they decided to eliminate any server identity as being purely PvE or being purely PvP, all of the communities consolidated in onto the largest or the vast majority of players consolidated onto a single server in order to have the largest population and then as a natural extension of that it seems as though people simply uh stopped switching onto the pvp shard for any real reason um because i think we had discussed perhaps even having a our poll option one of them was you know uh do you spend time on the PvP shard, you know, or, or are you too afraid of getting ganked or whatever? And my answer to that question is, you know, a very natural extension of that. Yes, I spend every moment on the PvP shard under all circumstances, unless we're doing something as a guild out in the open and they force me to switch to the PvE shard. Um, and the reason is because all of my dailies, all of my gathering, all of my everything that I do, I've never come across since they changed this status of the PVE to PV, you know, choose your PVE, PVP, whatever. I never, ever, ever see anybody from the opposing faction on the PVP shard. So when you course, say shard, you're meaning instance, correct? Because some of us are not yes. familiar with, with what you mean by shard. Sorry, it's not exactly an instance, but yes, I, uh, it's not an instance area. It is a shard. That's why they call it a shard. But uh, yes, the PVP instance might be another colloquial term for it. I don't play on PvE. 
even though you know because we all have we're all on satil shan or whatever and you can choose to be in a pvp environment or a pve environment and i'm always in the pvp environment because there's no one to compete with for resources or except for on oricon because sometimes i make magic hubby get on with me and i'm like <laughs> hey let's go to oricon and we go beat the crap out of some pubs yeah yeah it's still a thing people it still happens okay Can you find people on oricon that's nice i yes. haven't been to oricon in a couple years so <laughs> it's really jerky though because some people like they're like oh i'll show these imps and then they run back to their little um hideaway thing where all the champion jedi are and they're like oh yeah fight my jedi now i'm like you wimps don't be on a PvP <laughs> instance if you don't want a PvP. So, but yeah, we still PvP on Oricon. That w- we did that um, just a few weeks ago. So, would you vote for it to come back? Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Okay. Totally. No hesitation. So we will get the results in the chat room. Should we go over the community results of this? We usually do. So that would be yes. So go for it. I've put them up. Oh, ours. I meant. I thought you meant the ones in the chat room. We always do the chat room ones first. Okay. Then the community ones. So did we get anybody to vote? It looks like it's two to one yes. for yay in the chat oh, room. Okay. There we go. Which yay two votes nay, and a couple people decided not to vote. Oh. Okay. So, um, so uh, that is a little bit similar to the community results. So out of 124 votes, um, 73 of those are 59% were yes for they would like open world PVP dailies to come back. Um, And then 51 votes or 41% were no. That's actually not that big of a gap between the two. So it's slightly weighted towards the yes, but it's still kind of almost 50-50. So See, the, the, the thing I didn't like about um, them doing the instances instead of the servers is because now when the Grie event comes around, I have no joy in doing it. I don't want to do it. Because what I loved is going around in that little center arena, and it was the PvP area. When you walked past this invisible line, that was the PvP area. You could do your dailies there in the PvP section, and it was actually PvP. People of the same faction, people of the opposite factions, people are there every event. And sometimes people that have completed the event long ago come back just because they want a PvP because it's the event. And now at the instance, it's just not the same because you don't have as many innocent little lambs walking in there not realizing what's going on, so you can't just, like, jump people anymore. (laughs) It's not the same because I went to this last event, and I did it on the PvP instance, and I was so let down. It was such a bummer. I was like, this is not what it used to be. And that is one thing I really, really regret about them swapping the servers like this, so, where it's an instance instead of an actual server. So can I just like point out something? Um, <laughs> so when people are talking about people not wanting to get ganked anymore, that was Sakari's theory as to why it's dying off. Like that's the reoccurring theme I keep hearing from you. <laughs> Magic game because it is happened to me. You you enjoy and it was fun. going to get innocent lambs, but the problem is, is that when that happens too much, unless those innocent lambs wanted to play with well, you, the thing about the PvP, they're not going to want to continue doing it. So well, that's the thing I would about the pissed. PvP one. Well, then don't pick up the PvP dailies, you know. Right. And that's but the that's, thing is, like, if you're if you're his... going to do the PvP dailies, then you're gonna. Right. going to be against other players just right. like if you were in a war zone right. it's literally no difference except for you're going for a personal objective true um but then they wouldn't necessarily be innocent lambs in that instance right because they knew they were getting but on the flip side maybe people kind of got tired of getting smacked all the time i mean i don't know i i don't know be I, I, think, <laughs> I think it's actually an extension of laziness first you don't make a character on a pvp server if you don't want to participate in the pvp environment sure. then the uh the vast majority of people that did enjoy doing that had a server had multiple servers and enjoyed those right. large communities until they removed that actual server-wide mandate right 
So once that happened, then people get lazy, and then they ended up merging the servers together. But basically, what you have what you have is a significant portion that chooses to be on the PVE server, and then if you ever want to group up with friends or do anything with them, well, they make you go to their PVE shard, and then you're just too ding lazy because you have to keep putting yourself back onto the PVP one if you want to. So I think basically what you get is by virtue of the fact that they have the options available, people just get you know tired of switching back and forth because some people don't want to do it and others do and so they just stay where you know nobody has that option anymore right but whereas um, when we actually had a server that was singularly designed to be pvp it was a dynamic server designed for people that wanted to play that way so here's my yes. question um again i have no opinion so but just thinking from the outside um so we know um developers follow the money right and people and really which translates to people and populations so what about the idea that the populations were just consistently dropping because maybe not as many people wanted to pvp in this game as time has gone on that it just didn't financially make sense for them to have a mandatory PvP server? My theory that, was that it was perhaps because a lot of the people that were really into PvP were here for a couple of years and then left. Right. And that's that's why I felt like the Bastion died. Like, I left that server for a personal reason, not because I didn't want a PvP. There was my own personal issue that was going on, and so I left the server and went to the Shadowlands. Um, I chose the Shadowlands just because a guild picked me up and they were really active both in PvE and PvE. So it wasn't like I was like, oh, I'm tired of PvP. It was personal issues and stuff going on. If I would have had the choice and I could have done it differently and the stuff hadn't been going on that had been going on, I would have stayed in the PvP server. Granted, I wouldn't have been as active in pve i wouldn't have been as much into raiding and stuff but i would have definitely been in the pvp like that's what i did i pvp and i did do oh like my first hard mode raid was on the bastion so i mean i did do some pve but the whole thing about the open world pvp is what drew me there the idea that i'm going to be fighting jedi i'm a sith and i'm going to be fighting jedi like that the whole thing was just intriguing to me because i was like if i'm gonna play a game I want to play the game. Otherwise, I'll sit down and play on my console and play by myself. That's how I thought about it. So I think that a lot of the problem was that just people just started leaving. Because I know in the guild I was in, I think it was Eat, Sith, and Die. <laughs> um, they just started all going to other games. They were leaving the game. Mm -hmm. So eventually, the guild was like dead. Not because people were swapping guilds or just not wanting to get to it on that server they were going to a different server they were literally leaving the game so that was mm -hmm. my experience was that the server was dying because people weren't playing it but yet there was other servers that were thriving hardcore obviously and harbinger from, was and from my own personal anecdotal experience i never saw bastion dying under any circumstances but what ended up happening was every large guild that was doing end game pve content that i was in was transferring over to harbinger and I went through four different guilds that were transferring to Harbinger because it was like dirt cheap. And uh, they wanted to enter a larger PVE operations oriented group and have more people to cycle through to keep, you know, the best of the best that they could do in the trying to doing the cutting end PVE operations content. Because the other thing was that while the PVP was a heck of a lot of fun, when it came to actual PVP, like queuing for it and joining in, they were doing terribly with any kind of class balances, and those sorts of things were totally noticeable in an open world environment as well. And so finally, I, the only reason I left the server had nothing to do with the population of the Bastion. It had everything to do with the fact by that point, literally every single person that I knew in any way, shape, or form had any kind of relationship with had transferred, and I finally transferred with a guild. Um, and and that was happening because they were dirt cheap and because they were removing all server identity anyway. And so there was no reason to remain on a less populated server that really didn't have identity anymore. Yeah, I, I felt like it was dying because I like literally watched a whole guild like die. So from my point of view, that's why it felt like the server was dying. And when I would get onto fleet, instead of seeing like 200 people on fleet, like I first started 
when I first started playing this, what it was like, it would be down to like 50 people at like eight o'clock at night. There'd be 50 people in fleet. So to me, it felt like the server was dying because when I started playing, it was always like max population. It was always like really high. And there was multiple instances of fleet. People were PVP and people were doing stuff. And then it just suddenly felt like it wasn't there anymore. So that's why, from my point of view, it felt like it. Perhaps other people didn't feel like that. Everybody's got a different definition of a game dying, it seems. So, well, and also my times of like playing were vastly different because I was living on the East Coast at the time. <laughs> and yeah. you mm -hmm. easily yourself could have actually transferred later than me after I had followed literally probably 200 people that played regularly with a transfer. And I transferred, you know, a dozen characters because I had the cartel coins and what was it like? 80 cartel coins each or something like that something simple well no when i transferred it was still like 20 dollars to transfer a character so i transferred before you then because it was before it got dirt cheap i remember scrimping and saving like crazy to move all my pub tunes that i didn't <laughs> want to level again over to shadowlands because at the time i had i think it was still like either it was level cap 60 i think it was level cap 60 at the time and I was like, I can't level all these pub tunes again. I can't do it. I hate pub tunes. So I paid twenty dollars a pop to transfer those tunes over, so I wouldn't have to level them again. So yeah, I probably transferred before you. Well, and and for uh, Sakari, he said that removing the separation between server types is what killed open world PvP for him, in his opinion. The sure the option is always available, and we could do it easily today if we wanted to, but the incentivization just doesn't seem to be there. We were more susceptible to trying to stick it to the other side when open world PvP was the only option we had. Now the PvP zones are optional and are li largely dead space. I'd venture to guess that even BioWare's attempt to bring some open world PvP back on IOCAP was a failure. Which, to be frank... I'm I was sure... going to bring that out, actually. And I, I'm sure he's right because I haven't well. even gone to IOCAP to see that zone yet. <laughs> IOCAP, though, is... It's so confusing and like there's it's not easy to navigate. So I'm like, why would I want to go PvP there when I can't even get to my stupid quest? I I hate IOCath. Everything looks exactly the same. So I have not done any kind of PvP on IOCath, and I doubt I'm gonna be getting any achievements for that anytime soon. <laughs> I can't stand doing my normal mission there. That's just um, me. Yeah, somebody said something about there was a couple of people who mentioned it and it's their opinion was, is that it is um, mostly dead. Again, I have no um, personal experience. I'm just reading what people are saying in the comments of um, Reddit to the thing, but a couple of people mentioned that the IACAP thing and that even I, what there's like a robot or something that you can use, like in best yeah, part of your of whatever. To get into giant things and that yeah, and that's not them. right. And that wasn't even, um, I, um, and, and yeah, I guess I, I incentive should, enough. That's I what should also mention actually what my answer was. I also this. think it was obscure. No one really knew what to do. They're like, everyone I ever see pick up those things. They're like, what are these for? Nobody knows what they're for. How are you supposed to participate in something if nobody <laughs> knows what's going on? So well, I don't think it was well explained. And, and quite frankly, I didn't do it because I don't do coffee and Kotet. So why would I, you know, even attempt to get into an environment post those storylines to, to do anything? As I understand it, you're not actually gated by the content. But that entire area, mentally for me, is a gated environment. So I just, you know, I wouldn't... I guess you'd have to go to the galaxy map to get there. But like the only time I go there is when the guild summons me for whatever purpose, usually operations. Um, they, the person here said that same person who was like talking about the IOCAF daily area, trying to incentivize it with gimmicks such as controlling an assault walker, but people just aren't doing it. That was their opinion or part of their response back. And then they said, in my opinion, both the West, original Western ice shelf and the IOCAP area would have been better served as actual queuable war zones instead of open world battlefields. Yeah, and there but were, there he were was, people this person was salty. Too. Yeah, this person was overall uh, salty about just, um, uh, the engine strain, um, so many people, lags. So um, 
that's the perspective on there. Well, and I guess I should give my answer before we dive into some of the history as well. But my answer to this was actually no. And it, it which should be surprising because I actually really do enjoy, did enjoy open world PvP and it was a great time and everything. But uh, one, the way that this was phrased, I have no interest in having them give out open world PvP dailies on various different planets. Um, perhaps if they were to come back with some kind of ilum based one or have a dedicated planet for open world PvP with incentivized dailies that were tied to that. But I don't really want it tied into the existing content. And the other thing is, we, while I do know that they have done a lot of server upgrades over time, it is something that they do on a fairly regular basis, I'm not confident that they've ever worked on the architecture of their open world large scale encounters. Um, so that's why I would say no unless they really surprised us and said, hey, we've actually put in a couple years worth and we figured out how to have 100 people in the same area without problems. Now, to give some perspective to anybody that hasn't been in the game for more than five years, because Ilum used to be something very different, where you go to the well, Gree area great. now, it used to be a separate area. You would get there the same way that you do today. But when you landed, what it was was an entire open world PvP area, faction on faction, and as many people as could pile in there would go up against one another. The problem is, is that the server architecture couldn't allow to have 200 people on each side, so you're at 400 plus, all casting abilities, all rendering and mm -hmm. sharing that information. It just lagged out. Like, straight up. So when Sakari's talking about you go out too far and you get decimated and you stay back too far back, you get no action. You can't even tab target and hit people. It's because you don't see anybody. You're basically tab executability, tab executability, hoping to tag people before they die and get some sort of credit for it, right? And you bind yeah. up in front of each other. And then if you could, like, kind of push, the, like, flanking was really just slowly creeping forward and actually pushing them back. You know, and creating these lines that you can't overstretch, but otherwise, hopefully, you know, you're you're doing things. It was it was really really bad. It was objective based though. It was really interesting. Well, and actually, I don't know what the very very first rendition was because when I first hit uh, max level, I was never a super big PvP -er, and so I always preferred operations over you know hardcore PvP ranked PvP. So when I hit max level, they said. Oh yeah, now all you need to do is play tons of PvP to gear out. Because at the time, it was easier to, to gear out doing PvP than anything else. It's kind of the opposite of today. And I was like, well, screw that. I'm going to go make another character with my friend. So that's what we did. Then we found out about Ilum, and I went to see it. And at that stage, that's what I described to you was all I got to see. Then they reinvented it after populations had kind of dropped. Or maybe they shut it down for a while. But it was like you would go out, and there were different zones. And you wanted to stay in a zone because you would capture giant robots that would like have powers and stuff and then you could even like it was actually really good for searching out and doing gathering little materials the dailies were very conducive to generating currency in order to gear out and everything but it was still they never fixed those architectural lag issues um and, and frankly you could, you know they try to limit each planet to how many people there are, right? So that you can't transfer people in. Um, mm -hmm. But even, and those limits are, I think it's like 70 per fa faction or something like that. It's not a super high number. And if you bring everybody together today, like, so it's a total of 140 people, it'll still lag out. The last I checked. But then again, I haven't seen that environment happen in quite a while. Um, I thought it was so, like 250. Where did I get that number? Well, because it creates a new map once you break 70 oh. more. It used to be a lot more. They've brought that number way down now. I was gonna say I thought it used to be like 250 because I remember people were like, "Oh, we must we must have hit the 250 mark. It's a new map now." So I I just yeah. always thought that the cap was 250. I don't know. I haven't asked or even looked at that in forever. But yeah, that that uh, I will say that I didn't experience that because when that was going on, I was just getting my character up to 50, so <laughs> I wasn't there yet. I started really PvP and after that, when that was already done. At that time, they were gearing up and prepping for Rise of the Hut Cartel, and they had already started. Um, they had already started advertising for it. So when I pre-ordered Rise of the Hut Cartel, I was like, I'm really gonna get into PvP. And it's gonna be great. And that's how I'm gonna get those last five levels. And then I ended up being super addicted to PvP. So. I was like, it's a whole new world. I can PvP literally on a whole new world. But honestly, the only time I really did 
anything other than war zones or open world PvP. It was just if I was doing stuff with other people. Otherwise, I was constantly PvP. I was always PvP. And if someone's like, come on, let's go do an operation. I'm like, um, well, okay, I guess I'll try that. I'll go ahead and try healing. Because <laughs> at that time, I got really addicted to PvP. And then when I ended up moving servers, it's funny, I actually made a couple friends because my only time to play was after I got done with college, after I got done with work, after I got my kid in bed, and it's like 11 o'clock at night, and I'd PvP for an hour and a half with a bunch of guys, and it was like five or six guys and me, and we were just like PvPing like crazy, and we just keep queuing and queuing and queuing. And when I had to stop subbing for a while, I would just be able to get into a group with them, and when I hit my max of five queues, five war zones, they would queue for me and I would get in. And that ended up being like what I did for almost a year was just PvPing every night. And I ended up start, stopped doing open world PvP just because I didn't have the time. Now I'm like begging for open world PvP. I swap to PvP instances. I go to planets where I know people think that they're by themselves. And I go intentionally saying, come on, let's go. PvP, you're on this server, let's do it. Or you're on this um, instance, let's go. And I honestly playing this game now, I really miss it. I really miss it. And a lot of people, someone was like, it's people like magic that make me hate open world PVP. And I'm like, <laughs> I understand how it sounds when I'm saying it, but that's not how I'm feeling. It's not like I'm feeling malicious. Like I'm going to go track down people and hound them while they're on their quests. <laughs> it's more like I'm heading to a quest. I see them going to one. I jump on them. If they're better than me, and most of the time they were because I was the healer and they were not, they would kill me or I would kill them or we'd finally just quit and leave each other. You know, it wasn't harassing. It was like, do a quick duel and then leave. So just well, clarification. And that's another that question entirely, I... too, because now with the freaking companions being super overpowered, it's... like beyond belief. Shea Vizsla at low no level is anymore. insane. Just mm -hmm. saying. There's really no way to die anymore if you have your companion on heal. I mean... I run mine almost always as DPS. I know. And while, so if the like, other guy's got his as heal, tank. then he'll kill you. <laughs> yeah. Well, except yeah. if you're the healer, in which case, that's fine. Leave your companion on DPS. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I have a question. Do you think maybe... Because um, I'm still kind of locked into... Uh, I... I see where you're going with people getting lazy and not switching over the PvP in instance and not getting annoying. I can see that. But I just kind of think that if that were the case, that Bioware would have put more time and effort into trying to lure those people back or would have kept at least one planet or server or something, and they haven't done that. So it just kind of says, no, I just can't. If I had gotten my way, when they decided to drop down to only two servers on the East Coast, I wish that they would have made one PvP and one PvE. I would have liked to have seen that because that's the one way we could have seen something. But the thing is, they've already implemented all this tech for the transitional phases. So it was like, what's the yeah. point? Um, and, it, um, and I don't fault them for not even considering it. Um, I, I just... I don't believe, having gone through it at the time, I don't believe that the premise was, oh, we just decided to put everything into PvE as a result of a complete lack of PvP, because that really wasn't the case at the time. But it was with the introduction of this new tech that enabled people to tra transition however they want, which was really implemented because they were driving to consolidating all of their servers. And then as a, you know, as a outgrowth of that, as a natural outgrowth of giving the option, because basically they wanted to minimize their servers. They did architecturally design them so that they could, you know, have tons and tons of different instances of different maps, you know, of the same map over and over and over again. And, and they could handle, you know, load balancing with more people on a consolidated server. So I think that was more the drive. They wanted to create tech that enabled people to have the options to do it however they wanted on a single server or just two. Um, and but as an unintended consequence, I think that it just created an environment where people just basically decided to congregate where everyone else was rather than constantly be moving back. Um, so, but Redna, you don't think that there's been any change in population for people who honestly want to PVP? You think I, it's the same as it was back when you started? I would say or since even they added three years the, ago. 
No, I think that since they added the ability to transfer between a PvP style and a PvE style, that pretty much completely destroyed the ability to actually have an, a consistent environment that's a PvP style. And I think that anybody that was thirsty for that and didn't embrace other aspects of the game has probably gone at this stage. I think that the okay. PvP world environment for the game is dead for the communities that love that style of play. You know, I think that there's still people queuing for PvP on the regular because that's the yeah. kind of PvP they like. But for an open world... Oh, PvP, PvP, this game is time. this game for all intents and purposes offers zero open world PvP experience, and none of those Used games my are around conquest. if that's the only way they like to play. Right. Used to my conquest was always done on my PvP tunes, not because I was like, oh, I'm just gonna PvP to get conquest, but it was because I was going to PvP anyways. And you would do your two dailies and your weekly, and boom, hit conquest. And you know, if you do a little crafting, then you definitely hit over your mark, but. I queue up all the time because that's like something I like. Even on my phone games, I have a PVE game. It's like a um, Clash of Clans, and then there's a PVP version with it, which is Clash Royale. I like never play Clash of Clans anymore. I'm always on the PVP one where I'm battling other people. That's just like my mentality. When I play a game, I want to know that I'm better than the other person. It doesn't matter if it's skill or cards or what. Like I want to be better than that other person, not because it's like a an ego complex, but it's because I don't feel like I'm being challenged in a game if I'm just playing a storyline. Like, if I want that, I'll go play Mass Effect because I really, really, really love that sometimes. But that's not my mood all the time. I really want to PvP. And, like, the joy of operations and stuff is because it's a different mindset for me. And there are some people that PvP exclusively, you'll never catch them in an operation. And those are, I think, a lot of the people that really enjoy the PvP environments, the whole worlds of it. I I was with two different guilds on a different server, much like I am now, but for different reasons then. And one of them was exclusively PvP. That's all we did. We did guild events that was PvP. When we did the push to Scare Bear, like to get people to the Scare Bear title, and you're like, oh, well, what's that? If you've never checked it out, you should go in your legacy and look at um pvp stuff because on oricon if you kill a specific number of people in pvp you get a legacy title called scare bear and when you see people on fleet with that you look at them and you're like oh man those are hardcore pvpers or you got the people that just had their buddies stand at that uh thing and keep respawning over and over again so they could get the kills but back oh gosh like post rise of the hut cartel like right afterwards that was a thing that my guild did consistently is, all right, hey, we're going to go get more um, kills for Scare Bear. You know, it's on such and such day at such and such time. And, you know, make yourself available or don't, whatever, but we're going to do it. And it was a guild event. And we would incentivize people on the planet who were already there. Or we'd advertise on Fleet and be like, hey, if you're looking to get kills for PvP or whatever, you know, meet us here at this time, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, it was a guild people, event. It was a recruiting thing that we did. And there were people on forums that were incentivizing, you know, letting the community know about those things. Dude, when they released Oricon, in my opinion, honestly, that was the best in... Uh, what do you call it? A content patch ever released outside of an expansion. Oricon was awesome because it brought in a whole that new place was operation. hopping all the time but yeah because of the daily area and the way that it all tied in you know progressing through and it wasn't too big um and then it, it actually the, the very environment itself the artwork and everything and the whole mad zombies and stuff like that it actually really kind of environmentally contributed to the open world pvp feel like it was kind of creepy it was kind of scary and then when you're suddenly getting ganked by people and everything it was like oh my god you know it actually kind of fit the whole premise of the island and and yeah you're like run away ah! <laughs> uh, yeah that was just awesome yeah. bastion was so much fun for that right well even shadowlands like the guild i was talking about that was in shadowlands it was right after i transferred to shadowlands actually um that was a recruiting thing we did is we would go PVP on Oricon and we would advertise on fleet for like a week. We would advertise on our website. We would advertise in all of our like little chat channels that we had and we would like really pump it up and we'd have these huge e events and we would use it as a recruiting drive. People who were, were interested in that stuff were like, Hey, if this is the kind of stuff you're interested in, we do events like this all year long, you know, like five or six times a year, blah, blah, blah. We got big numbers. And at the time it was one of the biggest, guilds there and it was really really great i loved it 
when that guild started slowly like pe- stop doing the stuff because the people who were driving those events their, their real life got in the way like college jobs getting married having kids well stuff like that happened and the game became less important that guild kind of died i stopped seeing those events really like pushed on that server and to me that was so sad because it was a PvE server, but we were really enjoying the PvP aspect of the game. And we were getting so many people involved. There, Like, we would have multiple instances because we would have so many people involved. And at the time, I wasn't an officer. I became an officer right afterwards. But at that time, they were like, hey, you know, this is the kind of stuff you could be doing if you're an officer. We would really enjoy this, blah, blah, blah. So when that stuff started dying out, we started doing other events. I just noticed, like, a huge dip in how I enjoyed the game like there was there was a specific shroom and I was like oh this is such a bummer like open world pvp on oricon it was great because when you went to oricon it was with the mindset of I am going to do this content I'm going to expand the story and I am going to fight everyone the people who are being controlled the zombies or whatever people are being controlled I'm going to fight the people in the opposite faction and I'm going to, you know, see the Dreadmasters and stuff. Like, it was a mindset, in my opinion. Well, because that's what a lot of the people that were there for, they're like, oh, hey, pubs over here, you know, 10 o'clock, or pubs at this base, or who wants to group up and go get this set of pubs over here? Like, that was a very common thing for that, even the PvE server, that was a very common thing when you'd, you'd swap over to the PvP. They're like, hey, hey. Who wants to group up with me? I see a pub. Or, hey, there's an imp over here. Who, who wants to group up? Well, that was normal. I, I never see that now, ever. Oh, of course not. I don't. Like I said, I don't even see people on the PvP server. But uh, And Sakari actually does have an anecdote of his own that uh, part of the reason he enjoys open world PvP is that he considers himself an avid cartographer. Uh, he likes to complete the maps on every planet he takes any character through. Yeah. So he likes working on slipping behind the enemy lines to try to complete the maps on worlds like Alderaan, Tatooine, and Hoth, which was always a nerve-wracking adventure. He used to feel like it, he was undercover, and if he didn't have a stealth character, he'd try to, his best not to be spotted by using terrain to block people's line of sight so that they couldn't catch him or whatever. And he really does miss that. And kind of along those lines for myself, actually, I think it's part of the reason when they came along with that dark versus light um, event where you had to literally do everything over again because I'd already done every base class on both sides, male, female, blah, 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 whatever. And so I had to do it again. When I did it again, it felt like an incredible slog. It felt like such a grind because that entire aspect of encountering others and actually needing to engage them was gone you know like like i used to on an open world pvp server as i was questing along i'd see someone of the other faction right so i keep my angle camera to, ca- my camera angle pointed at them while i was working and ki- killing things you know or, or looting whatever or doing my various what i was trying to achieve but i'd be watching them in case they came my direction and if they did mm-hmm. then i'd be ready to react and defend myself or whatever but otherwise you know i'd do my business and and then if it turned out that somebody did come kill me and you know okay fine i got up and i went about my business and then i ended up running across them again and they killed me again then i might actually reach out to somebody else and say hey is anybody else questing in this area i'd like to group up right now there's somebody that's killed me a couple times i'd like to you know team up for some common defense i'll follow you to your class area and you know help you with your instance or whatever but let's yeah you know, I like did it, that a lot. it actually incentivized me to reach out to others whereas once the dark versus light came along i am suddenly like you know i want i'm trying to get all the achievements um and so basically it's just me running solo oh hey there's a guy with a red title over his head well there's no threat there i'll just keep going through space bar space bar space bar like i just didn't enjoy that experience and i i think that's why i don't level anymore like i i miss um the quasi threat of encountering somebody um just because it's (laughs) I don't know. For me, it's also probably an immersion thing. And this is part of the reason why I don't like the latest story. There's no uh, factions anymore, right? Oh, now you're the head of the Alliance, dominating over both factions. So what's the point? And it's like there's no real threat. And I, I, I much preferred the push and pull of the Rebels versus the... Or, sorry, the Republic versus the Empire. <laughs> and, uh, and, and having an extension of that in that PvP environment where I could encounter somebody that might, accident, you know, might kill me or maybe I could kill them in self-defense or whatever, but... 
I don't know. I think that's kind of where I'm at with it. So um, before we wrap up, I don't know. Are we going to go a little late since we were a little late to start? We're, we're doing that anyway, for sure. <laughs> okay. So um, we've talked about how it used to be, and we've talked about um, kind of disappointment of that era passing. So what is the compromise? Because, again, just keep in mind, um, there are, I don't know how, what percentage of people that there are, like, moi, who have absolutely no desire whatsoever to <laughs> go down that path. Um, I'm just not that type of a player. That's just not, like, I don't need to challenge myself against somebody else. Again, not criticizing, just it's not my play style. Um, so That's what okay. Magic is, Hubby can't do that either. He hates PvP. When I make him PvP with me, he goes, oh, he hates it. <laughs> It, when we play phone I, games together, even he likes the PVE games, and I'm like, PVP. Well, I've PV PVP with you. I like doing it, but I like the objective. I like the group. Yeah. Like I like the group thing. I don't like the one on one stuff. It just that just isn't fun for me. I spend too long trying to think about what I'm supposed to do, and it's <laughs> just not fun. Um, but so, what's the compromise? So you guys are over here. I and liked his idea. I would with the say the population is over here. I would assume probably the majority of the population is over here. So where is the happy medium so that everybody can at least get a little something to make them happy? I liked Redna's idea of, of a whole planet that was like PvP because then if you don't want to do that, you know, if you don't want to be in a PvP environment, don't go do those dailies, you know? I like that idea, like the whole world. And it would also fulfill some people's desires, like they want to explore a new planet. Like if you had a planet devoted to PvP and people were like, you know what? Okay, fine. I'll go do a PvP because I want to look at a new planet. I want to see what it's like. Even if they don't want to do the dailies, they can still go explore, you know? And they can not participate in the dailies and go look at the planet and find nooks and crannies and see lore objects and stuff. Like, I think that could fulfill more than one desire. Uh, I hadn't actually thought of that, but hearing it, I was like, ooh, that's a really good idea. There's there's more than one way they could make people happy with that. Granted, yes, they would have to come up with, like, some reason for the dailies to be there, but it could be something small like, oh, there's a planet over here that the pubs and imps are fighting over. This half of the planet's imp, this half is a uh, pub. Here's some dailies, try to you know get more points for your faction or whatever you could even throw in the dark versus light thing like that planet has its own dark versus light you know something like that there's i think there's a variety of things they could do with a planet that's pvp oriented and still be appealing to people who don't necessarily love open world pvp i guess my only thought is I just don't know if there are that many people around that are you know, singularly dedicated. Although I wonder how many people there are that are more like myself and, and Magic. I, what I could see happening is if they introduced a content patch again, something similar to Oricon. Not something that was tied in directly to this primary story that's you know, feels gated behind these chapter sequences that they had previously, but instead introduced, you know, an entire, it was an entire story sequence, but it was in a zone that, you know, nicely progressed through its story sequences, unlocking into a daily area, culminating into a, a cool operation style experience, um, but then also maybe some significant achievements that might have mounts tied to them or, you know, fun titles like Scare Bear. I mean, Scare Bear is a really cool title. It would have to be something that was really desirable, but tie it in like and do something similar. Maybe because they really have failed to get open world PvP quests, dailies to really catch on. Whenever they have, even with like degree material, it says PvP and it's a quest that requires PvP and all you see on the forums is thousands of people complaining that they can get killed. And it's like, yeah, that's kind of the point of <laughs> PvP, you know? And they, they cry for about real? the fact that that's exactly what it's designed for and that they have to actually submit to those rules. So I don't I've know never, that that's conducive, right? Like I think, I've never done those because I didn't want to go in and get ganked. So, so I've I never done those all the time. 
<laughs> so I am well, one of those people if it says PvP and it's open world and I don't do them because I don't want to. Well, just it. as a short story, it's actually really funny. There's this place where you can go and you grab an orb and you're supposed to then go deposit the orb somewhere. And then the whole setup is like if you kill somebody that's carrying mm -hmm. an orb, they blow up and massively damage everybody around them. Um, but then they also are prevented from doing their daily. Well, people were so care bear about it that they were lining up even though everybody was read to them they would line up and alternate who got to get it and if you actually came into the pvp area and you know engaged in pvp and killed the guy trying to get the quest done everybody they would, would chew get upset you with out you. yeah and they would rage at you and curse you and like hunt you for hours on end you know like character hopping like i'd slash ignore and they character hoppy two dozen times i can't believe you killed me it's a pvp area give me a break so i just don't know if the incorporation of the pvp quests is, would work that's why i think more like yeah. what they did with oricon where it really was a pvp environment but then there were incentives to engage in the open world and if you could if it, if it were enjoyable enough not like iocath because even the chat room has been saying the pvp pvp oh, yeah. daily stuff that was incorporated had nothing to do with the open world pvp even that was a, a explicit failure upon release like nobody's really engaging in those dailies either so it needs to be something i, I think, tried more one comprehensive time and enjoyable it. in its own right i don't even know where they are as a content release <laughs> and then maybe you could get a ton of people like magic gates and myself to say hey everybody let's go just switch to the pvp server you know you got to kill t uh, you know a thousand people in order to get this cool mount or something like that and actually really get people to engage with one another in order to get them into the environment and working together it's the only way i i, I see it ever succeeding but i just don't know if the existing community I will say, is though, that into even pursuing it i can tell I you that would not like... be enough incentive for me to do it well that's so, not right well there's some people no that interest. there's no this incentive is clearly not there's a conversation no for you <laughs> <laughs> so i, I will think say this though that with the conquest fight. with this fixed conquest now they are giving you points for pvp kills but not in a pvp war zone it's in an open world and yes there's ways to get around it like in our guild we're not a pvp guild and to get together for conquest we had a couple people get on pub tunes and we stayed on our m tunes and we killed them they would respawn we'd kill them again blah blah, blah. i know because i was the guinea pig for some of them so they killed me and got i gave them kills me too. but yes so uh, we did do that but i will say the fun thing about that is is it it does provide an opportunity that people go in knowing we're going to kill each other. We're going to get points for this. It's going to help my whole guild. It's not just a personal thing. It helps you get your personal conquest and it helps your guild get your guild conquest. So I personally think that that was smart. I like that. I would like the incentives to be a little higher though, like you to get more points out of that because I would like to go to Bell Sabbath and see like, you know, a hundred people in open world PVP there and not just for guilds. Like everybody's like, hey, I'm going to kill regardless and i'm in a group with you know 15 people so we're all gonna get points if i get this kill i mean that so would be a good I think idea conquest, they should really like vamp that up a bit that might be an idea for people to start mm -hmm. um I i'm just thinking uh, you know what something that's more immediate because a planet sounds great and i think that would be a very good like kind of gold star thing to go for but how long would it take them to do that and and yeah. what are you gonna have to give up to get that are you willing to give up uh, an operation to get that because well, as the long as it's resources to would get have this to one. Be well yeah right. let's be honest well, how long yeah, has it been since we actually got a planet of any sort <laughs> you know <Right. laughs> i mean so and it i'd seems much rather me see that, that than you know a pvp open world exclusive environment right I'm I'm thinking that you, they would have to be at least the same. I, I mean, at least of a of a raid to a planet. At least the pro planet is probably more. Would be it's just my gut feeling on that. But um, any last thoughts? I would like something to be done. So <laughs> last thought. I want more. That's the running theme of everything. I don't know. That I end up All I know is that I know that 6.0 is coming and I'm crazy excited about it. <laughs> and if they, because they have been talking about doing things more traditionally, not in this co coffee cotet fashion. And so I'm very curious to see, like, in my mind, 
doing an expansion that's more traditional inherently means another planet. Because prior to Kotfi and Kotet, it always came with at least one. And with, you know, uh, Revan, we had two planets. I mean, granted, Yavin was half a planet, more a daily area. I was going to say, you didn't get a full planet with um, Yavin. Did we get really a full planet with Rishi? Yeah. Was the whole planet... planet. The whole planet is explorable? Yeah. Uh, oh. No, there's in, there's parts of the planet that's explorable because there's islands. So like you, okay. uh, I would just say like every other the planet map that's in the game is smaller than Ilum. The map is smaller than Ilum, but it is full. Like you can go into huts and look at things, and you know there's areas that you can explore and look at. Yes, there's maps you can collect. There's caves you can go into. There's I'm not sure. There, that it's, it's definitely a planet. There's yeah, but is it like Tatooine? Is it this? Is it comparable no, to Tatooine, Tatooine and Moth are larger Rishi than any other planets? She is smaller than Ilum. No, I'm not talking about size. I'm talking about what you can do with it. I mean, on Hoth, we found that oh, then yeah, cantina that was out of its, you know, out of the way that we all went to that was off the beaten path. I mean, to me, that is the hallmarks of a fully explorable planet, like an open world, fully explorable planet. Rishi doesn't feel the same way, although it's more than what we've had with. Coffee or Kotet. I would I would call it a planet. I mean, my cab had similar complaints because it was you know giant uh, terraces that weren't connected, but there were still places that you could go around and find. I mean, it, do the uh, data cron on Rishi and tell me that doesn't have you wandering around tons of places that are off the beaten path in order to get it done. I mean, yeah, it didn't definitely have exists. to do that. <laughs> we exactly. came prepared. All I had yes, to do was because push you button. didn't do it. You let someone else do it for you. I'm saying go do it. You actually have to sit and grind pigs in certain locations over and over again to get drops and stuff. I mean, it's ridiculous. But um, yeah, I, I would personally still call Rishi a planet. And, and it might be a smaller sized one. I mean, Hutta is a freaking small planet, but I would still call it a planet, you know? So. All right. And Magic is saying thank you. She's muted, but she is very thankful. <laughs> Sorry. I thought I, I clicked the button beside it. I opened up my settings. Sorry. Anyways, they can hear, they can imagine what I was saying. I was trying to say thank you all so much for being here because we we're definitely at our time. So thank you for participating in chat. We had a very active chat tonight. So thank you all who were paying attention and who were talking and or hating on me because of my stance on PvP. That's okay. I love you too. Thank you for our Reddit people who hate us and love us. We love you too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the people who participate in Straw Poll. Thank you for the upvotes and the downvotes. And thank you so much for hanging out with us on YouTube, our podcast, or our Patreon. We really appreciate it. We love that you love this game, this podcast, this live show, and we love you. Thank you. And that brings us to the end of the episode. The council is adjourned. If you'd like to reach us, you can email us at thecouncil at thecouncilswilter.com. You can find Elise on Twitter at abrown35, Magic Ace at the Magic Ace, me at r3dn4, and our glorious leader, Emperor Sakari at I am Sakari. Don't forget to visit our website, tripwthecouncilswotor.com, and follow us on social media. Also, don't forget our Patreon page at patreon.com slash thecouncilswotor. That's it for this week, guys. You're not much of a challenge, youngling. I got you right where I want ya. I understand. You are on this council, but we do not grant you the rank of master. What? How can you do this? This is outrageous. It's unfair. How can you be on the council and not be a master? Take a seat, young Skywalker. Forgive me, master.